from Old Cam Review, the gas station. Uh, just uh, back with another re review for you. Um, I have a camera here that uh, I, I just think is really interesting and, uh, and it is actually, I think, a cool camera. I like it a lot. It is an inexpensive camera. Um, it's a, uh, the, uh, it's, it's not a, a great camera certainly by any means, but I think it's a lot of fun and, and if you wanna play around with something, it's a good camera to pick up. Yes, it's the R8. No, I'm kidding. The the R8, I believe, was inspiration for this camera, um, sort of looks wise. Certainly not in, in functionality and, and any of that, but uh, they look very similar. the uh, The camera I'm reviewing today is this one here, the Zenit uh, 412. This is the DX version. Uh, there is another. I mean, you could tell the similarities through the uh, the sort of hunchback look uh, to it. Certainly not an exact copy, but definitely inspired. Uh, by the uh, the Leica R8, um, so, but uh, yeah, just kind of a neat camera. I'll put the R8 away, but kind of a neat camera. Um, I think the real standout uh, part of this camera, and it's a Russian camera. Uh, I think the real standout part of this camera is the lens. Uh, this lens, it's the MC Zenitar uh, M2S, and it's an f2 uh, 50 millimeter lens. And it's a, uh, I believe it's an M42 lens mount, a screw mount. It's a Pentax screw mount, uh, so you can, you know, put this on any uh, Pentax screw mount camera, and you can, you know, any of the the uh, the Pentax lenses can go on here. Um, but this particular lens, I really like the way it renders color. I think it's got sort of a nice softness to it. Um, it's it's definitely not like the sharpest lens I've ever used. It's not bad. It's 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 decent, but I just I really like the way it renders colors and it's got just sort of a really just nice sort of the the contrast and the feel of the, of the lens is, is really nice. Um, so yeah, f2. So it's you know it's reasonably fast. Um, uh, this can most Russian cameras are uh, very similar in their operation. I'm about to do a. Uh, Russian camera sort of uh, overview. Uh, I have quite a few of the Russian cameras. I actually like them, and I especially like their lenses. Um, so yeah, they're uh, they're kind of neat, and I'm you know, and they, they can be had inexpensively. They got a lot of style, and they're fun to shoot and uh, stuff like that. This was actually my first Russian camera, which which was again the 412DX. DX obviously referring to the DX coating uh, in the camera, so you can put in DX coated film. The only thing is, is this only reads DX coding up to, I think it's 640 uh, ISO, which is kind of weird. It doesn't go to 800, but that's kind of strange. If you wanted to pick uh, sort of the better version of this camera up, I would pick up the, uh, the 412 LS, uh, which I think does DX up to 800. It might even go higher than that, but, um, but you could definitely do 800 film in that you can't do it in this i guess it's 640 sort of an odd number but um so that's that's you're kind of stuck with that and you can't put in any manual um you know changes to to the uh to the iso uh on this camera so that's a little a little funky but it has a, you know has a decent fairly bright viewfinder it does have um a built-in light meter uh it gives you three dots over under and then you know properly exposed um it's a you know two red uh, you know, one on either side of the green vertically on the right-hand side of the viewfinder. Um, again, the lens is an f2. The camera goes up to one five hundredth of a second, and the, the knob doesn't spin all the way around. I just want to let you know, but yeah, and it's kind of wonky to use, but it, it's a very sort of cheap-feeling camera, um, but underneath is an all-metal chassis, so it is actually fairly sturdy. Uh, the back door is not the sturdiest thing in the world, and the componentry is not the, the sturdiest of stuff, but um, it's, yeah, it's definitely on the cheaper side of stuff, but again, if you can pick one up just to get the lens, uh, or just get one of the lenses, it'd be great, but it's, it's a nice enough camera, and it's, you know, if you just want to go out and shoot and just kind of do that whole Lomography thing, shoot from the hip, they actually sell this uh, camera in the Lomography store. They sell them for about a hundred bucks. Um, that seems to be about the going rate uh, around, even though they seem to so sort of sell everything a little bit higher than anybody else. Um, I picked this one up uh, via Craigslist. I think it was about $30. 
So, you know, keep your eye out. Maybe you can find one, pick one up. Um, the winder actually doesn't feel too bad. Um, it's loud and noisy. This is not a quiet, stealthy camera. Um, it's got the sort of like crazy futuristic look to it. You know, again, sort of reminiscent of the R8, but certainly without the R8 quality. Um, it's actually got a nice little thumb grip in the back. So it's, it is fairly comfortable to hold. Um, and it's, it's kind of nice to work with. Again, I have big hands, so it's kind of easier to work with. The strap lug here does get in the way. I'm not sure why it's there, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, so it does take a battery. I think it's a, uh, you know, just a standard, uh, 1.5 volt battery. Um, the, uh, film compartment here, Right here, it's got a cloth shutter, and uh, it's got you know sort of an uh, auto feeding uh, setup. So you just put the the leader of the film in here, and uh, you just kind of wind it on. You should be good to go. Uh, it's not super complicated that way, but yeah, it's a it's just a you know simple cloth shutter. I mean, these are meant to be very basic cameras. Uh, they're, there's nothing super fancy about them, but you know they're they're usable and they do a decent job. And again, I really like the the Russian lenses, so. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to, to go with. I wouldn't save up and spend a bunch of money on one of these. I mean, if you can get one cheap, grab one. Um, it's definitely a, kind of a fun camera to have. Again, I've been really happy with the quality of the photos. Um, you know, and you're, you're sort of limited to a 400 speed film, or if you wanted to, you know, you know, you know, push it or pull it, whatever, you, you can only go to, I think it's 640, like I said. So, um, but yeah, just kind of a neat, neat kind of camera. It's, it's, it's got a little bit of heft to it, but it's, it's, it's moderately light. It's not, uh, I don't know, the weight I don't know, sort of betrays its size. It's heavier than, than it sort of looks, I don't know. It, it's got some weight to it, but it feels cheap at the same time. I don't know. But uh, kind of a, you know, like I said, a fun camera. It does have a tripod mount, which is nice, and you could uh, thread a, uh, a shutter release on it. Um, operation is a little bit quirky on them. Um, there's a self timer and stuff like that, and you can use all that. And if you're really interested in all, like, you know, the manual operation of it, I mean, other than just shooting stuff, and really, like, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with self timers and all that. I'm just going to take this thing and go out and just kind of just, just burn off a roll for fun. And that, that's really what this camera is about, is just go out and have some fun with it. Uh, again, it might be worth a couple extra bucks if you want to shoot 800 speed film. Uh, it might be worth it to go for the, uh, the 412, uh, the LS. So, as opposed to the DX version. The LS is still a DX camera, but the ISO goes a bit higher. So, I don't know. That's it. Just kind of a fun camera I wanted to show you guys. Again, nothing spectacular, nothing groundbreaking. This is, you know, not a, uh, a showpiece for your collection, but it's something that's kind of cool to have. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, just decent. You know, shutter speeds go from bulb, 30th, 60th, 125th, 250th, and 500th of a second. So nothing really in between, but you don't really need any more. So uh, for, for most stuff, I mean, like I said, just to, just to go out and have fun camera. Don't worry about if it, uh, if it really gets trashed. But, you know, if you can keep the glass, I mean, like, I really like these lenses. I really do. I think they're really nice. So anyway, that's about it. Gas Station, Brian, oldcamreview.com. Um, and I'm going to try and throw some more stuff up for you. Um, I got a, a bunch of stuff in the works. So anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Any questions, comments, concerns? If I'm wrong on anything, again, you know, just let me know. Leave it in the notes so other people, um, you know, if they read through it or whatever, they'll uh, they'll get the uh, the correction. I am not, not ashamed to be corrected. So uh, again, if I get anything wrong, absolutely say so. Just... Constructive criticism is good. That's about it. Anyway, that's it. Brian, Old Cam Review, The Gas Station. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for subscribing. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and uh, you know what? Subscribe. Get yourself a Zenith. Okay, fun. Anyway, talk to you later. Thanks.